Welcome to Race Face TV and this two-part special edition interview with young 14-year-old Virginia late model racer, Minnie Tyrell. So let's get right to it with part one. Well, welcome to Race Face TV and this episode of Race Face Spotlight. First of all, I want to start off by wishing everyone a happy new year. This is our first show in 2019, so I thought it would be fit to go to a driver that has a lot of first in his racing career. So we are headed up to Manassas, Virginia to talk with 14-year-old late model driver, Minnie Tyrell. Minnie, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing really well. So it's the new year. It's 2019. What a better way to start off by being on Race Face TV. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. All right. So we've got a lot to cover tonight. So I want to start off by just talking about some of your on-track achievements. And this started at a very, very young age for you. What age did you actually get started in racing? I got started racing go-karts at Old Dominion Speedway, which is my local go-kart tra go track here in Manassas. And uh, unfortunately, Old Dominion closed down here in Manassas, but they reopened in Thornburg. Um, so that's where I started in, uh, is, is in go-karts at four years old. My dad asked me if I wanted to try, and I was like, yeah, why not? <laughs> Can you believe that we're 10 years forward now, that you've been racing for 10 years and you're still only 14 years old. That's an amazing feat. Yeah, I, I, I still can't really like, I'm like, has it really been 10 years? It definitely doesn't feel like it, you know, whole decade. That's that's pretty crazy. But, um, you know, I, hey, you know, I look at it as uh, racing is uh, my number one passion. I want to go after it in life. And um, if I can't, you know, I'd, I actually, uh, I want to work on the race cars and I want to, you know, at least be involved in racing because I, I really do like the sport. Well, I think you got a bright future ahead of you. And so let's go back. Let's talk about 2009, 2010 when you got started. It's not like you just went out there and started racing. You went out there and started winning. You had 24 yeah. wins in a go-kart. So can you can you remember back and, and think about that first win that you ever got? Oh, it's geez. Uh, I remember my first ever go-kart race was at King George Speedway. Um, not exactly sure where that is, um, but it was at King George Speedway on an asphalt racetrack. And um, it was in a kid cart and it was with my friend. And uh, I remember I was having a great time and um, it was just me and my friend Jacob out there. And we were, we were going and uh, I remember I was so far ahead and I, the white flag came and I remember learning about the flags and everything and I knew what the white flag meant. So I went through turn one and two and then I'm on down the back straight away and I'm like, well, and I used to lift off the throttle a little bit in the corners. So I was like, I think I'm just going to hold it full throttle through the last three corners. Like, you know, what am I thinking? Like, you know, well, Jimbo Jones, you're going to win the race here, but no, you just want to hold a full throttle. So I'm like, yeah. So I, I, I hold it full throttle and I spin out the first quarter. <laughs> and uh, I lose the race to second. But um, other than that, that was, that was about my first go-kart race. And I believe the second one after that I won um, with some actual competition in there. Um, well, not actual, but, you know, more and more carts that showed up. So that was pretty cool. So I just kind of started in the kid carts. And then I went and won probably, I'd say, a good 10 races on the season. And then I started in champ carts at the age of, I believe, of six and raced those for two years and then went on to arena cars and raced those and bandoleros and now I jumped in a full-size late model at nine and a half years old so all right so let's go back a little bit um two things i wanted to say number one think about how much differently that you look at the white flag today than you did when the white you looked at the white flag back then now the white flag comes out you're just going dear god make sure that the car stays together nothing Into happens these nothing breaks yep yeah, just make sure the brake pedal's there, make sure the gas pedal's there, and um, just get me through the four corners. There you you know, if there's a wheel off, you know, I'm just going to try to drive. But um, especially when you're on the lead, you know, now 
when you've got, you know, some of the, the best competitors and best drivers in late model stock cars racing either behind you, in front of you, and you're right there. Um, it, it is very intense. You know, you're, you're thinking like, what can I do to either get by them or how do I hold them off? So um, that's a thing that you have to do. So I remember I looked at the white flag and I was like, oh, well, just one lap to go. And then now I'm like, oh my God, just get me to the end of the race. And get me to the end. So let's go back and let's talk about arena racing a little bit. A lot of our mm -hmm. viewers probably are, are thinking about what what is arena racing? Because that's mm -hmm. uh, it, it's not um, available all over the country. So talk to us a little bit about arena racing and what makes that so tough to do. So give us a short description of that. Yeah, arena racing is basically half scale stock cars. If you picture what I'm in now, just half of that and a little bit shorter. Um, just say it out. It has like a small almost generator motor. I don't know if you know what a generator is, basically uh, for like a trailer generator um, and a, and a go-kart motor kind of combined. It's, it's weird. I don't really know how to explain it. And it has an automatic clutch. These cars are automatic propelled and the racing was indoor at the time where I did it. And normally the cars that are called are racing now on the asphalt and they're called mini cup cars. Um, but now um, when I did, it was indoors on this really tiny, like bowl track and um it was it had a ton of rubber on it and oh, it was so hard to turn the wheel i remember the first race that i came out i remember just just holding my forearms the entire time um because it, it really did hurt i mean it gave me a huge arm workout i tell you what i thought i was like big man by the time i got finished with it but um so yeah and then i, I moved on or I raced a year and a half in the youth division and then moved up to the adult division, which they let me compete in that. And then won a B-Main race, which is the second uh, feature race. And then I won the uh, the top dog race at the uh, end of the season. Right, so let, let's talk about that first. You had 30 plus wins there. You were the youngest ever to win at the Richmond Indoor Coliseum at the age of eight. And then you were also the youngest to ever win in an adult series. So what was it like being that young racing against people that were two and three and some, and maybe even some cases four times older than you? Yeah, no, I, I think, uh, I, I remember just like, I take racing very seriously now. Um, when I see, like, I always look at the times and, you know, I get that hard on myself. Like, why wasn't I that 10th quicker? You know, like why, you know, but, um, you know, before I didn't like, Racing was just, it, it, it was very fun to me. It still is a great fun time. And, you know, I just look at it as, you know, more of like almost a job in which case, and I need to perform in, um, which I obviously I'm not, you know, pressured into driving a race car at all. And I want to do this. This is under my consent and I love doing it. But um, so, yeah, I think it's just, uh, I used to look at it as, eh, no big deal. You know, I'm just here. I'm having fun. I'm racing, you know, and uh, I would get in the car and, not care what anybody else thought about me. And I, I would hope that they treat me the same way as they treat everybody else, um, even though I'm just, you know, nine, eight years old um, on the on the racetrack. So, and, you know, I, I, tell, I tell them what, you know, I, I think I taught a few of them a lesson too. Yeah, and you also won a World Karting Association World Dirt Championship at Daytona. Um, what was yes, that sir. like being, again, that young, going to the, the holy grail, if you would, uh, of auto racing there in Daytona? Yeah, no, that was really cool. I got to go uh, for a whole week, and, or actually, yeah, a full week. Uh, we flew in the first time and um, to Daytona, Florida, and uh, got to stay and uh, got in the go kart. And it was, believe it or not, it was the first time I ever drove a flat go kart instead of a champ kart with like a roll cage. Um, so I drove a flat go kart for the first ever time. Never set foot in the cart. We just built it up in our garage here at my house, uh, weighed it, did everything with our, our, our cart guy who was our crew chief and everything. His name was Billy Tweedin. And um, so we went there with him and uh, unloaded it and got in practice. And I think we were like third or fourth quickest and I had never set foot in the cart. Um, and then as soon as we came out, I qualified on the pole. Um, and that, this was in the first race we ran. I believe it was like three or four races. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but... Um, so the first race we went out and we won and uh i, I remember like because like at the time like you know i think i was what seven years old you know like i i didn't really process like you know you just won daytona like not many people could say they won daytona um 
And uh, so and then the second race was like more of a money race. And uh, we finished second or third in that race. And then the uh, the third one, I believe we came out with like a third or fourth again. So it was just, it was pretty solid uh, top three finishes. And then um, I had won a champ cart race also. So I came out with two top or two wins and, and a lot of top fives. So that was pretty cool. And all I remember was getting the trophies at this trailer there. And um, I remember that I, I like, I'm a very short guy. I'm nothing but probably 4'10". Um, but uh, so I remember getting these trophies and they're, they were probably as big as I was. I mean, these, these are like cups and they're not that, they're not that tall. They're like this big. And I'm like, dude, these things are huge. But um, yeah, so it was pretty fun. I, I, I really, I, I would like to go back and, and run carts there again. And obviously I'd like to go there and run a, a, an Xfinity or a truck or a cup car there. Well, I think that day will come. But let's go back now and let's talk about being the youngest to compete <clears throat> in a full-size late model at Shenandoah Speedway at the age of nine. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I was nine, uh, well, nine and a half, and I had started my first ever race, and Sam Beatty was actually the car owner at the time, and uh, he, I was at his, how this, well, hold on, let me, let me start over. Um, so I was nine and a half, and uh, at, the, at the time, uh, Sam Beatty was the car owner, and I was over at his house here in, uh, in Manassas, and I was bush hogging his grass, and um, I, I, this car, the 81 car that's still famous for today was sitting in his garage. And um, I said, hey, you know, when can I try it? When can I get in it? Kind of looking at it as like a joke almost, you know, not really thinking that I would actually get in it at my age. Um, and I, I've always wanted, I've always looked up to these cars. I've, I've grown up watching them on the racetrack. Um, so I thought it was very cool. And he was like, all right, well, if you get a seatmate, get in it. And I was like, you're being serious and he was like yeah and i was like okay well i'm gonna drive this charlotte with uh my my parents and or no I, I believe i drove with him i drove with sam Beatty, and we went to charlotte north carolina and got a seat from butler built and uh drove back put it in the race car from uh, mitch piper and uh we were off a test day on friday at uh, shenandoah speedway and um i remember getting there and they said at the at the entrance, you know, hey, this is our driver, and they were like, oh, you know, that's so funny, you know, uh, you know, playing the role. It's got its little race suit on, and and they didn't even notice. And so I went in there, and the car got unloaded. And obviously, I was, I, you know, to be a hundred percent honest with you, I don't think I was really nervous at all. I just was like, hey, this is another race day, and or another another practice day. So I, you know, I get in the car, I'm getting situated, and. Um, you know, I started to go out there and I make a few laps just in third gear and then I ramp it up to fourth and I'm just doing, you know, just getting used to the car getting, I never driven something with a clutch that's a race car. So that was also a first time for me too. Um, so I, as we pull in and there's this old lady there that was next to us and I get out of the car and she was like, and, and I, excuse me for the, but a midget's driving that car. And, and I was like, no, ma'am, I'm, I'm nine years old. And she was like, and she just laughed. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm nine years old. And they, uh, so I think no one really believed it at the start. And I, I did so well in it. I was, I believe I was four tenths off the pole of the last weekend that was the cars that were running there. Um, so yeah, they, uh, my dad was like, well, um, did you want to go and race the next day? And uh, I was like, yeah, why not? Yeah, of course. You know, why wouldn't I want to do that? And um, and Sam Beatty was like, well, I guess we're going racing next tomorrow. <laughs> so uh, we left the car there and came back and we raced. And unfortunately, we were in lap traffic. And I was actually racing side by side with somebody. And we went to split the car because he wanted to go to the outside. And I was just going to go to the inside. Probably a mistake by myself. But um so I went like this and he went to turn down and just hit me and I flew and spun out. But, um, you know, hey, it happens. But the second race I finished and did very well in. So that was cool. Now, just so everybody understands, back when Minnie was doing this, <clears throat> these were not junior late model races. You were out there racing with the with the adults right out of the box, right? 
Yes, sir. Uh, 400 horsepower, 450 horsepower with a 500 barrel carburetor on it. Yeah, and then 2015, you became the youngest to ever win a late model stock car race at the ripe old age of 10. <laughs> yes, sir. Yep, so uh, I won that race. I believe it was the exact date was July 25th, uh, 2015. Um, it was over the summertime. So obviously over the summertime, I love summertime. You know, I don't have to go to school and I can just focus 100% on racing and, and doing nothing but that. So that's that's one of uh, the bonuses about summertime. And um, so over the summer, you know, I, I'm excited. And I, I looked at Sam before we even started the season because we had just rebuilt the car and put a new clip on it and redone it and everything and got a new motor for it. And to run next year at Shenandoah. And um, so I looked at Sam and we were in this van at his, in his driveway in his van. And I said, we're going to win a race this year. And he said, well, you know, I hope we'll see. And I was like, no, we're going to win a race this year. And I was determined to win a race at, uh, at my age. And, and, you know, really, I didn't look and take my age as a disadvantage at, at whatsoever. Um, I always looked at it as I was 3,100 pounds and they were 3,100 pounds, the exact same. Right. So um, and the, no matter what height we were, no matter what size we were, no matter what age we were, we're 3,100 pounds. Um, so that's the way I kind of looked at it going into it. And uh, the first race that I'd won, actually, I finished second. Um, and I, I really worked hard for that second, too. I was battling on the outside with uh, Brian Purdom, who's still a good friend of my own today. And... Um, and we finished second, and uh, the car in front of us had gotten DQ'd for um, illegal part, I believe. And um, so we were granted the win. So I was credited the win and the youngest ever win at age 10. And then after that, directly after that race, the, the weekend after, I won it again. And, you know, I didn't, I didn't finish second this time. You know, I was actually the winner and got to celebrate in victory lane. So that was very cool. So now we're going to okay. talk about 2016. What a year. Seven wins, and you won the championship, and you were 11 years old. What mm -hmm. was that like to actually win your first championship? Uh, I think uh, I just kind of, I don't I, you know, I really don't know. I, I, I think I still haven't really processed um, what I did and what I have done up until today. Uh, I think... Winning a first championship was very cool. I remember I got to uh, to win a lot of races and was very fortunate to do that that year. And, you know, had some incredible crew members aboard and uh, that every single one of them that are still on my team to this day um, were with me when I won my first race at 10. So uh, I think that that was, that was very cool. Um, I know uh, winning a lot of races there was, was very fun. I got to celebrate in Victory Lane and uh, I sure did make friends with, uh, I think, almost all the fan base there. And um, so I, I would go and I'd say hi to every one of them every weekend and uh, go in the stands and visit with them. And I got a really nice thank you card um, from a lady who went there. And it, it was, uh, she said, well, thank you so much because you're the only driver that comes out and actually talks to us as fans in the stands. And, uh, and I thought that was very cool. And I, st I still have that to this day in my house somewhere here. But um, so, yeah, I think winning my first championship was like, I don't know, it's just like a feeling of victory, you know, like you did it. You know, I think uh, the first thing I did when I got out of the car, uh, which was like the last race, and I think the one where we clinched it and we either finished, I think we might have won the race and we clinched the points. And uh, I got out of the car and stood on the door and, you know, arms up and was like, yeah, and got out. And the first thing I did was gave a, a big hug to uh, my dad. And uh, I just held them really tight. And I, you know, I looked out and I said, we did it. And um, so that, I think that was the most memorable part. I think that was, that was definitely the coolest for me. Now, you were also selected as one of four drivers to be in the inaugural team called Racing Virginia. Tell us a little bit about that and what that actually meant to you, because you were in that group with some pretty cool people. Racing Virginia highlights the grassroots racing and uh, the short tracks in Virginia. They go around and promote all the short tracks. And they're at, they're based out of Richmond. And Richmond is their home race track, is Richmond Raceway. And uh, they they come there. And I was chosen to be there. And they help promote us and, and give us special, you know, promotion options. Um, 
It's well, really, I guess at the, the end of the day, it's all about just promoting short tracks and letting the fans know that this is really where it's at. I mean, the short track racing, I think if you look back on your career, um, that's where you've actually developed that. That really is what makes mm -hmm. you a, a, the racer that you are today. I mean, there are people from the West Coast that comes out to this area through South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia just to be able to run on these these short tracks because they know this is where the best of the best is. And to be yeah, selected no, definitely as one is. of four is a major, major um, highlight in your career, I think. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, if you go and then you watch NASCAR races, I, I you know, to be 100% honest with you, uh, NASCAR is cool, but I think definitely if you go and watch your late model racing at a short track, that there's beating and banging, you got people, um, you know, hitting each other, and it's just, it's, some races are what we like to call rec fests, and, uh, you know, I don't really prefer those type of races, but um, they're very fun for fans to watch, and if you're going to get, you're not going to get that in a NASCAR race, you're definitely going to get that at a short racing track, so, um, you know, I think uh, short race tracks are, are where it's at, it's where the good racing is, and uh, it's also a great community to be around, and all the people are very nice. Wow, what an amazing young man, both on and off the track. We will be airing part two of this interview with Minnie next week, so make sure to tune in, and everyone have a great evening.